lead and lag compensators. In this section, we're going to continue to use the root locus to design controllers uh, in order to have a desired dominant pole location for our closed loop controller. And we're going to continue to use Simulink to validate numerically or in simulation how our controller is going to perform versus theoretically how it should perform. Compensators are another type of controller that we can employ to our growing toolbox of choices. We've looked at a proportional controller, an integral controller, and we've combined proportional and derivative controller to look at a PD controller. So in the PD controller we just looked at, we had a choice of adding a zero into our closed loop system and then a specific gain, uh, and that would impact how the closed loop system was going to respond. But we saw that that can introduce some difficulties because when we design our controller using the root locus, we are assuming it's acting like a true second order system. However, we're likely adding an extra zero into the system, which is going to impact its performance. So one option we have is in a more advanced controller using a lead compensator or a lag compensator. What we're going to see is that with a lead or lag compensator, we can add an extra zero and an extra pole into our closed loop system. And by making the right selection or a good selection of the extra zero and extra pole, they may cancel each other's effects, yet still drive us towards the performance that we desire. So the controller is going to look in this form. We are going to still choose some gain times an S plus Z over S plus P. We're going to select a zero and a pole and use that to make a root locus to find the proper gain for our system in order to get the dominant poles we would like. Now there's two types of compensators. There's lead compensators and lag compensators. If Z less than P, we have a lead compensator. When Z is greater than P, we have a lag compensator. Uh, typically, our choices for the extra zero and the extra pole are going to be in the left half plane. So if the pole is to the left of the extra zero, that means that the P value is greater than Z. We have a lead compensator. If the zero is to the left of the pole, then we have a lag compensator. Now, when we're using a step function as our reference signal, uh, the lead or the lag compensator might do what we want it to do. We might get the performance that we're interested in. Uh, but really where a lead or a lag compensator can shine is going to be in the frequency domain. Now, it's outside the scope of this course what we're really looking at, uh, especially when we're looking at uh, these control systems. But if we want a specific uh, performance for a frequency reference signal out of our system, that's where lead and lag compensators can be helpful because they can modify what the Bode diagram is going to look like. We'll see that at the very end of this section um, just as an observation, but we're going to stick to looking at reference signals that are step inputs right now. Using a lead compensator versus a lag compensator can have different uh, impacts on our performance, especially in the frequency domain. We won't get into that too much. Uh, however, we can actually build a controller that's a hybrid that uses a lead compensator and a lag compensator to make what we call a lead lag compensator, where we would choose two zeros and two poles and use that to find our gain. And in that sense, we can get the best of both worlds, the benefits a lead compensator can offer and those that a lag compensator can offer. Let's start looking at implementing a simple lead compensator into a example problem. So we're going to continue with the same plant that we've been looking at uh, from the previous lecture, this one over S squared plus two S. Um, again, the open loop system is inherently not stable because one of the poles in the open loop system is zero and the other is negative two. So the one thing we need our controller to do is to stabilize it to get us to our desired steady state value. Uh, we're gonna continue with five volts as our, as our reference here. Uh, but this time we're going to do it with the lead compensator, or in general, a compensator in the form of this K times S plus ZC over S plus PC. And we're going to continue in our desire from the previous uh, lecture with the PD controller. We want our dominant poles of the closed loop system to be located at negative 2 plus or minus 2J. So let's see how we get to this desired pole location. So I form my GRL or the G prime, uh, which is going to be the controller without the gain times the plant. Uh, so we have this S plus ZC over S, S plus PC, S plus two. I'm keeping it factored here because then it's very easy to see where the zeros and the poles are. 
So the Zs I identify as Zc, and the P values as zero, positive two, positive Pc. Uh, remember at this step, when we're going into finding the total angle of G prime, we are using the opposite sign of the zeros and the poles. We are, again, typically going to have negative values for our zeros and poles. So here, probably Zc will be positive, Pc will be positive, and then we have the negatives of our poles, zero, positive two. So to continue, like in the previous one, I'm selecting a desired pole location, negative two, plus or minus two j. And we discussed before, where would this uh, desired pole location come from? Well, we probably want a desired max overshoot, a desired peak time, uh, and that's how we'll go backwards to get where this pole is. But arbitrarily right now, we'll stick with this as our choice. So if we look at uh, finding the angle of it, I have three P values. So I have three of these negative angles and one Z, so I have one positive. So I'm going to again here use negative two minus two J in for the S value everywhere. I could just as easily use minus two plus two J, uh, but as long as I use the same one everywhere, then uh, this angle technique is going to work. So two of these uh, I can compute already because I already know two of the p-values as numbers are zero and positive two. So just like in the previous example, the first term is going to be negative times negative 90 from that angle minus negative 135 from that second angle. And then I'm left with the angle for using the pc term and the zc term because at the moment I don't know those as numbers. But similar procedure as what I saw last time, I can move my constants to my right-hand side. Now again, in order for negative two minus two j to appear on the root locus we're going to create for this g prime, the sum has to be an odd multiple of 180. So in this equation right now, I just started by setting it to 180 degrees. I could have used the right-hand side of negative 180 or again, any odd multiple, and that would be okay. So if I move the 90 and the 135 to the other side, I am left with negative 45 on the right-hand side. And now on the left-hand side, I'm left with two terms uh, from the pole I'm going to select in my controller and the zero I'm going to select in my controller. So unlike in the PD controller, where there was a unique solution because at this point I had one unknown, the zero, and one equation, I now have two unknowns and one equation. So I actually have an underdetermined system. I can select a combination of ZC and PC that satisfy this. Now it's not any choice of PC and ZC, only the choices that satisfy this equation. And what we're gonna see is in controllers like this where we have this extra latitude, these underdetermined systems, we have a lot more choices in the controllers we can design and the types of behavior we can see in the output.